All right, we get a scan. CEA's five. Smoker. No. You said they want you want the it's smoke. It's California, yeah, so they're only doing this, but it's uh, a no. And, and let's say the scan shows um, two spots on the liver that in retrospect were probably there, but now they're bigger. Um, and How big? Uh, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> centimeter. How about that? CEA's gone up a little bit. Two growing things in the liver. How about that? Uh, over in that first six month or year scan. All right, now what are we going to do? Hmm. Anybody want to Did they go? complete adjuvant? Yep, got all their adjuvant therapy, stage three. Less than six months? Yes. I send them, well, number one thing I do is either get a PET scan to make hmm. sure there's no other disease hmm. or a dedicated CT with liver protocol to make sure we're not missing something else in the liver. But for. A, I'll we, give you all of that and there's nothing else. Okay. For two lesions that are one centimeter or less, I do send them directly to the liver surgeon. Anybody else? Yeah. Surgery? Y you know, yes. You're a surgeon. Yes, but. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they don't let me cut. <laughs> but I send it to the liver surgeon with a discussion. Yeah. yeah. Tumor Not, board, yeah. presentation. Yeah. Right. Uh, the concern with a relapse that soon is that they probably have a higher risk of having other disease that you might not know about yet. So um, I have to admit our surgeons are more likely to ask us to treat the person for some time, even if they even could. Even for one centimeter. Um, I'm, I'm sure if any of them are watching, they're going to say, no, we don't. We, of course, go right to surgery. But I, I think they are very concerned about uh, their outcomes and having somebody pop up with a lung lesion six months after they did their liver surgery. So the only thing I would suggest in that case, and I presume your liver surgeons do do that, but put a fiduciary to mark the lesion, mm. because what if the tumor Those shrinks so much? Yeah. If they're going to do a lobe, that's okay. But if they're going to wedge or RF, right. they need to know, know where, where, it, where was. it was. Yeah, so I, it, it, this is a really important thing. And I think our world has gotten pretty clear on, you know, increasingly aggressive about trying to get patients to what we call stage four, no evidence of disease, or through surgery or other approaches. And I think most all of our centers have, you know, all the bells and whistles. IR is an incredibly important partner for us now uh, with Y90. Interesting new data, I, I sort of, that wasn't on our pro program, but you know, the, what, what do you think about the Y90 the initial the Searflox study and just to yeah. review that real quick. Well, I mean, th so this is where patients got randomized to either chemotherapy followed by um, Y90, mm. uh, yttrium label beads to the liver, followed by chemotherapy versus chemotherapy alone. And what they did see was um, very good response in the mm. liver. Mm. So, so Y90 can give very good response to the liver, but in the end, there was no difference in survival or you would have progression outside of the liver. Right. And, so, and so I think it's great if you need to control the liver, right. but you gotta worry about the rest. Yeah. Do you, anybody buy the right-left arguments or the subset of the right-left? So maybe you're thinking about it more on the right side? I thought that was very, very interesting data. Granted, yeah. it was also, you know, post hoc, subset. yeah. I mean, my yeah. biggest concern is exactly what you said is, you know, this is, um, if, if we, particularly with a pretty rapid progression into the liver, um, we're pretty likely to have something somewhere else. And it's more, this is not usually going to be liver confined. And what benefit do we get from liver directed therapy if we're just going to get more, you know, disease outside the liver? And so if you really need control of the liver, great, but oftentimes we need more therapy. What I about intrahepatic FUDR? I mean, it, I'm seeing oh a resurgence of this. I've got more patients with pumps. They've gone up to New York, got seen in the left corridor, so they got a pump. Um, is this happening at, in Texas? Uh, so I know that they have a phase one uh, trial utilizing it, but I would say the majority of us would not use it off study. Yeah. But going back to the Y90, yeah. I mean, I have to say, and granted it's anecdotal, I have utilized it in a patient with predominantly liver disease while they were on maintenance chemotherapy. Yeah. And, and, and basically they were on maintenance um, and had the Y90 uh, for over a year. I like this approach. Go well, ahead. here's the concern I have yeah. with Y90, and maybe I just had a slew of patients that, mm -hmm. got, that got this, but especially when you use it early, the issue with the scarring and the mm -hmm. fibrosis and then cirrhosis from the Y90, and I've, I've seen a number of folks that, that end up getting So it. I do warn patients on this subject is we don't really know what you'll be like in a couple of years, yeah. and will you be eligible for phase one right. trials and all right. of those things, because now your, your platelets are 80 and right. you know, your billy's up. Duke, what are they doing? Uh, well, we have very aggressive uh, IR physicians. Mm. However, uh, they still, I think, take their cues from what we think the disease is doing. Yeah. And for a very motivated patient, I agree with you, the, uh, the maintenance phase, if there's an area that you think you can control, uh, go ahead and do it. I think they're very selective in how they deliver it. The treat the whole liver widely thing you know, may not apply for certain patients. 
What's and the craziest thing you ever recommended taking out a Met? Taking out? Yeah, so somebody with a, a liver Mets all are easy. Sane. Like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sanity is Look a judgment right. uh, from, from others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, a periodic bone, bone lesion? Bone. Yeah. yeah. Occasionally the surgeons will try to do something to a, a vertebral body if they yeah. think they can. Periodic lymph node? I have done that, yeah. That's crazy. But once in a blue moon, very okay. select cases. Well, that's what crazy, you know, you do it every now and then. Yeah, you have to pick your spot, right? Mediastinal adenopathy. Um, How about that one? Isolated mediastinal adenopathy. Ever done that? Uh, no, but they, they usually have lung They've got other stuff. Yeah. So yeah. the question I'm really asking is, is this a kind of a debulking as surgery has gotten better? You know, we're, we're, the, the original theory was curative, right? I'm going right. to get the last cell versus surgery is better. They recover well and maybe getting that out of there if it's easy, maybe worth but it. Then you're you go in there? Then why aren't we taking the primary out in all of our so medical So you know me, I <laughs> like taking patients. primaries out. I think it's actually the right thing to do, but I'm, you know, it's, if you can find the window. Taking anything crazy out? I haven't taken anything crazy out. And, you know, when you start doing things like, you know, taking out mediastinal nodes and all these things, like, you just worry about it. You're getting into, like, a whack-a-mole game. Yeah. And you take one thing and you take something else, and, well, if we took those out, why not this? Yeah, I'm not um, a big so it's fan. Bad, it's bad for the patients because they seem to think that they, they tend to be more likely to think it's curative rather than a debulking right. procedure. But we all have these long surviving patients that once a year or so they develop a new crop of tumor, right? And, and we, mm -hmm. whether it's liver mets or lung mets, and we feel that that's more rational. But that's good biology. Yeah. That's a different story. Well, that's, what, he, that's the kind of patient I'm thinking about. That, that, that might be more appropriate. Yeah. But the way he's describing it is, I think, it is what we see quite a bit at times is that there's a little bit of cherry picking. The last extension of this for me is the sort of high pec peritoneal surgery piece of that is that, um, you know, I live in a city where we do lots of it. And um, so what is sane and rational in a colorectal patient? And so appendix we're all cool with, right? right? right. But so is there a patient that you might do this? Low grade, still the mucinous mm. uh, appendix type patient, somebody who's had isolated peritoneal disease for a year. Mm. Somebody who's really proven that, that there's no other metastases and it's something slow growing. Peritoneal disease about to obstruct. No, <laughs> no other disease. Nailing him. No Certain. other disease. That's, that we sounds like away. a very <laughs> bad, <laughs> very bad biology to be yeah. attempting that. Okay. I mean, we asked the surgeons to come see them, right? Uh, They're in, and yeah. they usually politely leave. Decline. Yeah, they decline. Yeah. Is that when they send you? So you know they have <laughs> yeah. to cut and they're like, more so go see them. <laughs> That's usually seen by resident disgust with staff. Yeah. Right. But I think there's pressure here because there are more and more of these surgeons that are trained in this and the strict indication is few. And, you know, hospitals and hospital systems are investing in these teams. And, you know, they're sort of to every nail is this a hammer. And, um, but there are, there are tumors that seem to behave peritoneally, mm -hmm. the ones that metastasize to the ovaries, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think you can make a case, but I think too often somebody will also have a s small liver lesion. And then I think trying to address both of them doesn't make sense. Yeah, I was fascinated. I think it's a GIS Go just presented was that in gastric cancer, I think it was, yeah. where high pec showed it, you know, actually the chemo part of that was important. I've actually doubted that for many years, that it was just the surgery, but that this was suggesting maybe chemo is, is important. So we'll see how that goes from there.